Hey guys, what's up everyone, and welcome to Young Titan World, where we are having one fantastic day. Today we're going to talk about one particular TV series, and that would be The Outline. Now, I have not read any review concerning it, neither do I know anything about it, apart from me watching it from start to finish. And so, if you do not want that particular TV series, the story, or spoil for you, my suggestion is that you go watch it. It's a really horrific, um, you know, mystery movie, trying to find mystery TV series, trying to find out who killed who. You know, and it's very, very clear what you're going to expect. Someone's dead, everyone at the party is a suspect, the cop comes in, she tries to solve the investigation, and she comes to a conclusion that doesn't make sense. And then they give you a whole rap as to how things work. Yeah, so um, from this point on, this whole is spoilers. So if you want to go watch it, please, with her love God, just go and watch it. And don't make me back out. Alright. Now, this uh, starts off as a reunion. You know, um, old schoolmates coming back together to relive the glory days, to chat about what happened and where their lives are at. That is basically the start of this TV series. Now, everyone is from their own background. They've achieved or lost something, and so, you know, when they're coming up against those who've met in the past, you would obviously want them to see you in a better light. You want them to see you looking good and feeling great, right? So everyone's a little bit pretentious, a little bit too happy, a little bit overgrounded with thoughts of cockiness. Um, anyways, as the night proceeds, one of them is a favorite musician, artist, and uh, he's got record labels and everything, and he's totally living the life, and he even comes in a helicopter, that's so freaky. I'm sure everyone would want to come in a helicopter for a reunion, right? Yeah, high school, oh my god, I came in a helicopter, everyone come up to me. That seems like a imagination I could conjure up easily. But anyways, if it decides to go a wrong turn where his famous musician is dead. Now, everyone at this party, or the after party, is somewhat a suspect, and they have motive to do what they did. You know, everyone has been, in a way, been crossed by it. Okay, so these guys and ones, both during the party and back in school, so they've got beat. They've got beef. Some have bigger beef, some have less beef. Some of them don't even have beef at all, like Walt. Walt is just like the ghost of Christmas past, but you can't see it, and it's pretty much non existent. Which is pretty sad, you know. The kind of person that is always around, but no one notices him, and he always feels left out, and he tries as much as possible to get known, but that backfires quickly, and he just gets shot back in the background. You know, kind of like an NPC that tries to cut out and be an NPC. But it's already been written cold, and there's no way to escape that fate. So, um, yeah, the story progresses. Um, the cop, who is played by Tiffany Haddish, I love her to death. Uh, she, um, she brings out the, you know, well accomplished um, detective as a person who is trying to find out the truth before another detective comes on board. Now, from her experience, the one who has who this entire investigation has been assigned does not have a good track record of keeping with the information. You know, it's kind of like um, when you solve a piece of the puzzle and you think that's it because the company did not send all the pieces. That's exactly how he solves all his murder cases. So everything that he does, he goes halfway and thinks that's the end. He sees the, you know, he sees the very basic things, and he says that he knows who the culprit is, and automatically, he picks them, you know, even if they're being framed in a certain light, they're not able to, like, get out of his conviction that the first person that he suspects is usually the person who is, which is kind of sad, really. I, I don't really think any detective should have that level of intelligence, but apparently he does, so let's go on with it. So yeah, um, Tiffany Haddish, as, um, as the detective, decides to figure it out before he comes along so that she can actually find the real person and not the person who's been framed, or who looks like they've been framed. 
Um, so everyone tells their story. Everyone at the at the party tells their story. They start with a leak. Do they start with a leak? I don't know. They start with something. I think it's a leak. And as the the plot thickens, everyone is known to have an agenda. You know, um, there were those who were wronged by um, by Xavier, who is the that's the name of. Her. The musician, famous musician, now killed person, and uh, they're trying to find out who killed him. You know, so everyone is pretty much a uh, hopeless. Everyone would have wanted to put a knife between this, you know, shoulder blades, but he was actually pushed off the balcony, so that that is pretty much how he dies. So he pushed him. They don't know who did it, so they're trying to find out who did it. Um, as they, we find out more and more about the characters there. We have. The crush that Anik has, the girl that Anik has a crush on, who has a daughter, who's married to Bozo, who speaks and farts. Um, it's pretty much a lot of information. Okay, if I was supposed to go through one to eight, I probably would not finish in fourteen minutes. But I can tell you that everyone's story is different. Anik tells a story from the side that is trying as much as possible to be honest. I mean, the only time that he may have fibbed a little bit was when he was talking about um, his crush leaving the helicopter with Xavier in the ring so boring. But it wasn't. It really wasn't. He was just trying to be emotional about it. Everyone else had a very unique storyline on how they told the story. And they were always trying to make themselves look a little bit too cool. That was except for some of them, you know. Um, and... It's not easy. If you want to enjoy the story more, you probably would have to, I don't know, pick a jotter or take a notebook, write down the things that were relevant to each episode and try and compare it with everyone else. You know, because every single episode had someone telling the story. And once they were telling the story, they were trying it in their own line. Like everyone had it's like the script changed with every single moment. So it's kind of difficult to keep track of that. But apart from that, I mean, I don't think anyone needs to be that cool when it comes to enjoying a TV series. Uh, but in any case, um, it concludes that it, it is actually Nick's best friend. The guy who has been around me the whole time. The person who was okay with the idea of eavesdropping on all the other Confessions made by the other suspects. So technically, for this, um, it kind of made so much. But think about it. And unless, of course, you're the kind of person who just wants to get to the ending and doesn't want to think about the process that got there. And in which case, you're you you're right. You're right. It's a lot to process. It is a lot. I really did enjoy the fact that there were different storylines that were said in this particular show. And um, it it had, I'm not saying it's the first of its kind, but it's that kind of unique that makes you think about how everyone felt during those moments when they were trying to figure out who the culprit was, you know? Because in actuality, um, everyone looked like an easy target. Or like an easy person to put the blame on, especially me, who was trying as much as possible to be a cheerleader. You know, I am not a person, even though he was like really pissed and was trying to ask the best to um, express that he was not a violent person. <sighs> Anyways, I like it. The reason why I'm saying it in such a low tone is because. I'm inside, I'm in doors. Uh, as much as I need to be the life of the party and ruin everyone's silent afternoon, I'm too much a respecter of persons to actually do that. And um, I guess that's problematic. But hopefully I will evolve from this and it won't matter if I'm in a crowd of people or I'm by myself. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching and listening. Um, it really does mean a lot to me when you guys are able to look up my content. 
Um, please subscribe to my Spotify account. I will be posting more than just um, reviews there. I'm going to be posting more songs as well. So you can also check that out as well. Thank you guys so much for listening. This is Leon Tidy. Um, also, yes, yeah, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Twitch, Twitch, and um, uh, TikTok. Because who doesn't have it, right? And by this time, it's kind of like an ID card for everyone else. Yeah. I really, really feel like the energy has been draining from you this evening. After me. Why am I getting the day and time on? Okay, I got you guys.